Good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to this um, online conversation called As You Like. Uh, in the next hour, we'll have um, an outlook on some international models of support for uh, personal development and social inclusion of uh, vulnerable young people, mostly disadvantaged uh, young people. I'm Francesco Fattori, and I'm here with my colleague, Francesca Zamboni, and we are both social researcher at uh, Codice Ricerca Intervento, which is uh, an organization uh, based in Milan that uh, do social research, uh, evaluation, uh, and um, trainings. And this is the final event of a series of uh, conversation that is called uh, Ghosts uh, Ghost Do Not, do not uh, Exist. Uh, in the past three conversations, we uh, met different Italian professionals that work in the field of social inclusion uh, of disadvantaged young people. And we also tried to go beyond the, the neat label and um, this evening we will uh, we'll discuss with the organizations um, involved in the LIKE project, which inspired and made possible this uh, um, this conversation, which is and this is the the last one of a uh, of four conversation. Uh, LIKE project uh, uh, means um, is the acronym for uh, life investment. Life investment is key to employment and is a, a multidimensional project. Uh, funded by the EEAN Norway grant and involves partners from Bulgaria, Hungary, and uh, Latvia. And every partner within the, the LAC project will uh, implement different uh, activities towards um, social inclusion and uh, work inclusion of um, disadvantaged uh, young people and specifically um, people with um, young people with um, mental um, health uh, issues and um, mental disabled people, also uh, physical disabled people. And within these uh, kind of activities, there was uh, professional guidance, uh, training on the jobs, uh, individual therapeutic uh, sessions as uh, uh, pet therapy, uh, heart therapy and sport activities, for example. Uh, the LIGHT project started in 2019 and it's, uh, it's now in its final year. And so we're, we're reaching um, the end of the project and Codici uh, have been responsible for the evaluation of the project. So we, we visited the different countries. We have uh, uh, talked and interviewed the professionals that worked in the in the LAC project. And we're we now guests of uh, uh, PINS uh, Association in, uh, uh, in Riga. Um, so let's say without further uh, ado, I'm going to uh, introduce the, the people that are going to discuss with us tonight that we then, then we'll join the conversation we're gonna uh, talk uh, with uh, Jacqueline uh, Stacheva she's a project coordinator for SPOCT that is the organization based in uh, Sofia the um, leading partner for uh, for the project so the Bulgarian partner and together with Jacqueline we have uh, Veselina Paskaleva Paskaleva maybe <laughs> youth, youth activities and group coordinator for SPOC in Sofia Sorry for uh, mispronunciating your uh, your name, guys. We have uh, Norbert Naski, that is a project coordinator for Association Pins based in uh, uh, Riga, Latvia. And then uh, we have uh, Shidoi Kristina, uh, is a professional manager from Salvavita, which is the uh, organization based in uh, Budapest, uh, Hungary. And unfortunately, we could not, uh, not have um, human profits tonight with us. Uh, that is the other Hungarian organization that joined the project um, two years ago. So we organized this uh, conversation in um, a roundtable format, and we have uh, we're gonna ask uh, three main questions to our to our guests tonight. And so let's uh, let's begin with the first question, and uh, we're gonna start with uh, with, with Spock colleagues, and uh, we'd like to uh, for you to. Um, let's say, explain and describe your uh, approach and uh, how you implement it and choose your activities, um, telling us um, a story, a successful story, and uh, we mean a story of a, of a need that participated in your uh, activities and uh, had a positive uh, outcome, something that, um, in, in your opinion, was uh, successful and, and a positive also process and explain why um, that part, that that the process was positive and then a, a successful outcome. Hello, everyone. 
Uh, in order to answer this question, I want to actually give an example to, to share the story. But uh, the, the second part of the question was about uh, how do we measure what is successful story. So I'm going to give uh, two examples for you so you can understand better. Uh, the first story is about a boy that uh, came into the Hidden Likes house. Uh, he was uh, 20 years of age at this time. Maybe uh, his mother brought him to the house. She saw from internet. Uh, he was so socially isolated that uh, he, when we asked him a simple question like, uh, what is your name or how old are you? He was not giving, uh, he was not registering even that we are talking to him. His mother was uh, answering instead of him. Actually, and he was uh, just looking somewhere in the space. He started uh, joining the activities and he was coming to every single activity. And um, I think he stayed maybe one year, one year and something. But at the end, he was able to, um, to come alone to the house, also to, to go without his mother, to answer. He learned a lot of new ways of expressing himself uh, through the art therapy and through everything. Uh, and at the end, uh, Actually, he, he, was, uh, he was ready for work. We saw that he's, he's already um, made friends and he knew how to communicate. So, uh, but he liked to come to the house and the activities. So uh, he started to go to job interviews and stuff, but he was refusing stuff uh, and offerings because he wanted to come to, the, come to our activities. And okay, we, we, we sat with him one day and we said to him, okay, we like you very much. We, we are glad for your success, but you have to move on and start your uh, work uh, time. So uh, you are free to come every time you want to see us, but you, you have to work. So at the, at the moment that he stopped uh, the program, he found a job and we are still in touch with him. We are seeing his employers also, and he's really, really good um, on development. Uh, the other story is about uh, one boy that uh, he also came with uh, his mother. He's younger, I think, eight, uh, 19 years old. And um, he was talking nonstop, like constantly talking, but he was more like commenting what is going on in the room. He was uh, listening for everyone, and uh, but he didn't have opinion on the things. He was just commenting, like, like he's commenting some uh, sports game or something like that. He was not uh, having personal feelings or anything. And uh, one day I, I left him for a bit um, like this in order for him to integrate, but there was no, no moving at all. He was staying at this position. And at some point I pushed him a little bit and he was super angry at me. He said, okay, Veselina, I don't want to talk to you anymore. I don't want to come again. And I said, okay, it's, it's up to you, but I cannot uh, make you come. Uh, the next time he came again with his mother and his mother wanted to speak with me. I was, uh, prepared, I was prepared to defend myself. And she was like, oh, I just want to tell you that uh, my son is really angry with you and he, he didn't want to come. And I said, okay, look, I'm sorry, but uh, this, this is the way I need to push him in order for him to change. And uh, th this is how it works. And she said, oh, no, no, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm super happy that he is uh, having some feelings and he's expressing some emotions. Like he, he has never been angry before. And uh, actually this, this is my two most uh, memorable successful stories because they're totally different from each other. Uh, the, the second boy is still coming. He has still a lot more work to do, but I also consider it already a successful story because he's much better. He's expressing himself and uh, uh, he, he, can, uh, he can communicate on a better level. And I think, I think these are two stories that, uh, that show that uh, there is no measurement for success, like uh, a place to be, but just to be better than yesterday. Thank you. And, uh, yeah, I'm open if you have more questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Veselina. Now we're going to uh, listen to Norbert and then Krista, mm -hmm. and then we're going to maybe try to summarize what were the main um, the main things that came up just to um, summarize them. Yeah. Hello, everybody. I want to tell also some success story of the, of the guy who is around 25 years old. So he was uh, experienced uh, 
some disability or with a, with a poisoning. So he was in very hard situation in, in, in reanimation and he, he wanted very much to turn back to the, to the, to the labor market. And we, we, we spoke with him, we trained him and, and he always was, was very open, willing to, to do something and, and to be participating in the, in, in the work. So he 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 started with a, with a training. We we tested his his patience and and his ability to to do different works, and every, everything went went good. So then we started to find some jobs for him, and we found some some supermarket chain, which we we, we suppose he he will be good uh, good to do the job. But uh, he wanted to to do the job not not in big uh, big big place, so we chose the the um, the, uh, the technique which 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 collects the uh, the recycled bottles. So this uh, spe special automatic, uh, and he was trained how to how to do the the work and everything, but the it's always requesting also some medical medical supervision and the medical medical procedures should should be gone through before the work uh, uh, be, be, before the employment and so we we turn to the to the general practitioner to the doctor we we we, we gone through this um, and then he started to do the different procedures but there is also interesting story that this uh, that the general practitioner she supposed that white person with, with with disability should to work, so she was very much against this, uh, and she said that she, that she will she will not enter. And this is a, is a question of education of, of also medical staffs and of the different things to to move the the process ahead. And uh, then the person was trained and, and everybody, everybody was, was very happy about him, but, but so work was not started. And then uh, appeared another one employer who was a private uh, chain of, of, of senior houses. So we, we, we moved him, we offered him and, and moved afterwards to the to the uh, this uh, the senior houses and and there was also the necessity to to move the longer distance from house from home to the to the new job job place and uh, and in this case it's probably also very important that the family members understand what and how to do because uh, to to follow the client to the, to the working place is also important important thing should be done and and to to wake him up every day and to to follow things so at the moment the person is very good employed in this in the senior houses and uh, and he is very helpful he is doing the works possible and uh, in this case, this uh, uh, medical examination was not required from the employer. And this, this shows that the, not always this, probably these regulations are, are, are so, so important to, to follow to, because, because sometimes this, uh, this question of, 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 of employment and the question of, of secure uh, employment is 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 a very uh, very important, but but people people can uh, can get also the job and and do very successfully. Uh, also, if they if they wish to do, if they can to do, and and sometimes we see that these regulations are 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 making some breaks, but uh, but but it's always possibility to to choose and to find the way how to employ and this was very very good story to to see that that some some 
some processes can be in between some some official processes but but in the end if the person and the team is working to the to the target to to get into into labor market so it can be and it's, it's, it can be very good followed and 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 to make client and his family happy it's my story thank you thank you very much norbert and uh, was very interesting also combined with what the, the colleagues from Spock said. So we have a lot of elements already, and we we now would like to listen to to the crystal story. Hello, everybody. So it's a girl's story uh, that I'm going to share. She was uh, 20 years old when she came. Uh, first, uh, she came to an open event to the youth house with her mother. And then she would not speak, she would not interact, but pretty much uh, hide behind the mother. There was one exceptional moment when we were sitting together and drawing, then she was really shining through that activity. We agreed to have an interview to enter the program, but she did not show up. Uh, later on, uh, I reached out again uh, to her and we figured out that she was uh, too scared to come for the interview, even that we have met before. So then we set up an online interview that she could do from uh, her home, but even that was too much for her. So she asked the special educator whom she knew from before to join her in this very first uh, interview. And this is how we did it. And uh, you can imagine that from this starting point, it was very difficult for her even just to arrive to the youth house, even just to come to the place. So it was not uh, obvious that she would come, but she did and she made efforts and uh, it was very clear that she is uh, all the time making steps to do something which is not so easy for her. She started a university, uh, uh, so uh, that was not the issue that like she was very good with thinking and uh, with brain and uh, everything like that, but she had difficulties with uh, social interaction. Uh, she lives with autism and when we started, she also had uh, difficulties with eating food and also sleeping, meaning that she would either not sleep or sleep through the day and not in the evening and not eat or forgot to drink, uh, many difficulties like that. So for uh, us, the first step was to stabilize her in these daily activities like uh, sleeping and eating. She also went to the psychologist that we could offer through this program. And uh, I was guiding her through the group um, programs and activities that we did, such as art therapy, because that was something that uh, she really felt comfortable with and also the animal therapy and also the other uh, job related uh, activities that we had. At the beginning, she was very, very withdrawn and not talking too much and not interacting. And you could see like week by week that she's somehow opening up and uh, starting to relax and start to communicate first with me or with, uh, with other professionals and then uh, also with their fellow youngsters. It was not like a smooth uh, process. There were conflicts and fears and uh, big events, but we got uh, through this. Then the next step was that uh, we organized the summer camp, which uh, required the youngsters to get away from home, get away from Budapest where we operate. So we went to the countryside for a live-in uh, uh, camp where we would work uh, together. So also practicing life skills like cleaning, washing clothes, cooking, etc. But also doing other type of work like uh, renovating furniture or painting the walls, etc. It's not easy uh, for people uh, um, who have like social uh, anxiety, for example, because uh, they have to uh, survive a different setting, uh, very close to other human beings and so on and so forth. Here I would like to mention that most of the youngsters that we work with uh, had uh, some kind of disabilities and uh, challenges would be sitting in a wheelchair, uh, living with autism, uh, being homeless, and so on and so forth. 
but back to the story of this girl because uh, she liked art very much uh, so first we thought like that could be a job uh, direction to her but she resisted it big time and uh, after a while we understood that uh, it's her safe place to be and it's not to be transformed to a bird but she also enjoyed working with animals so the first job uh, she took was uh, at an animal shelter where she worked uh, through the summer part-time a uh, few hours where uh, she learned like how to go regularly to a job how to be responsible and so on and so forth then we were lucky enough to offer her a job at our foundation again for a couple of months where she was still in a safe environment doing a different kind of task and it was more stressful for her because it um, required that she had to deal with also human beings not only animals but in this way she could improve uh, herself further then at christmas time uh, we saw that she is ready to go uh, ready to take part in a work which is like uh, more hours regular including other human beings um, around not with us but really external to us so she went and she's working in a kind of a handicraft um, factory it's a small uh, business a small uh, uh, place to be but still she has to work there uh, daily uh, with other people it's handicraft so it's something that she enjoys uh, uh, doing uh, but it's it's for um, it's for earning money and making her uh, living. Um, I am still in contact with her, and uh, she enjoys her work very much. And she and also other youngsters from uh, our youth house they started a project and they sent an um, Erasmus Plus application. I'm uh, not sorry, not Erasmus Plus, but European Solidarity Corps um, application. Um, so they want to run their. Uh, own initiative a uh, small group for these youngsters that they want to have um, free time activities uh, together so they actually uh, designed this idea where she was also involved and we will see if they get the funding yes or not i really do hope that they will get the fund and in this way uh, she will also continue the socializing with the fellow um, youngsters as well not only she already got herself into. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chris, very much. And just uh, one minute just to summarize what, what, what you've said and just noted some some keywords and some main some main concepts. So I, I may have missed something, but this is what I uh, what I noted, like it's very important to engage um, families, to have families on board, uh, of course, uh, from the story that Vaseline and uh, told us and also have safe spaces to um, make people express their uh, emotions and to unblock some situation they maybe have been uh, stuck for um, years um, one uh, meaningful thing in my um, opinion is that uh, you said about there is um, no measure for success so every person is different and the meaning of success changes uh, every time and according to every person's experience and um, other important things that have been said is that um, work uh, is not the only option, it's not just uh, uh, the only positive outcome, uh, shouldn't be just getting the job and getting um, employed, but there are also a lot of other positive outcomes. And uh, there must be in case of um, employment, these um, uh, contexts um, have to be safe environments and um, also the, there must be taken small steps uh, that can mean um, success that can be can be can be meaningful and um, from what Krista said uh, also being flexible in the engagement of, of young people so every person is different as we are different and uh, so we need to uh, be in, to, to be uh, equipped with um, different instruments to engage young people and find the right way and the right uh, access on how to engage them. And um, and of course, it's important just not to um, go with them until the employment phase, but also to following up um, during the employment phase because that's 
uh, one of the main critical uh, moments and uh, and then can create some uh, some problems for the person so uh, we're gonna move on with the with the second question so we're gonna ask the question then uh, again starting from from Spock and then uh, Norbert and then Krista yeah uh, all of you have mentioned uh, many type of acti activities uh, psychological support uh, consul consultation uh, group activities uh, career guidance uh, support and and uh, um, summer camps, uh, skill training, and so on. Uh, or, um, these, these were all activities uh, each of the organizations have provided um, to youngsters. Um, and in the project um, called this activity the like houses, um, with the idea that uh, with a multidimensional program, um, each part partner could have um, offer a different kind of um, proposal and programs uh, to people. Um, but you have implemented these activities and your houses in different ways, um, not only regarding activities, but also um, concerning locations. Some of you have decided to, um, to offer activities in one site, in one location, in one hidden black house. Uh, some other have decided to, um, to spread this activity in different uh, sites on the territory. Uh, so um, we would like to know from you uh, which are, in your opinion, the advantage and the disadvantage, so the pros and the cons, uh, of the of these two um, different ways of uh, providing support to to people, so the centralized one and the decentralized uh, one. So I give the word to Spock first. Yes, thank you. Uh, well, first of all, I want uh, to make clear that uh, this the the model is so multidimensional that it, it accepts any different reading but basically it's a, the same program and it's interesting that how we how we read it in different ways and every organization in each country moved to different uh, places uh, but the best thing in it is that it's uh, it's first of all it's evidence-based and it's made to meet the specific need of this exact uh, uh, target group of young people needs uh, so uh, the best thing about the program itself is that, uh, first of all, it's um, it can be it, it can be flexible, uh, and it it takes the model of uh, a holistic model. Like first, the person is uh, in the center, but he is on one time. Uh, first, he's in a group therapy. Then he's in animal therapy, which is outside. Uh, also, he goes to a sport, which is, which can also be inside or inside or outside. This is some kind of mixed. Uh, uh, also, he's on individual therapy, which is uh, in an office. Uh, and on the other side, there is also first his parents and uh, his family circle or his friend circle, which are coming to and working with them. And also, this is the model of the employers, which we are working uh, with again so i think the, the center play the, the place is centered but it, it takes many outdoor and uh, outside activities um <clears throat> but i think the focus uh, the, the best uh, thing here is that uh, the 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 program is really multidimensional and the, the approach is really uh, on on each site it's it's very um i don't know how to to say that it's it's uh, looking at the person uh, as a whole, and it's working with every single part, uh, all the so-called, I don't know, stakeholders, everyone who is involved. And as a minus, I would say that this work is really time and um, it's ready, uh, it's hard to organize, first of all, and also it's very time and uh, budget and resource consuming. Like it's it's not really uh, self-sustainable. 
it's uh, it requires a lot of effort first people effort so second of all volunteer work uh a lot of time to organize everything a lot of possible outcomes that can happen which are not predicted uh it requires also a lot of of course budget and uh, uh in in this way i will um, make some announced to the to the to the third question actually but this is a really consumable this is the minus that it's it's a lot uh, it requires a lot this kind of work and that would say is a minus <laughs> thank you very much thank you uh, i give the word to norbert to pins yeah i want to add also to this that uh, we are very we worked we try to work very much client oriented and this is this is the good uh, in this in this multi-dimensional program mentions that uh, that uh, every client is so different and the needs are so different so we are we are trying to to make the best for the every client to to lead him to the to the labor market, and uh, and also this was very challenging time when we walked uh, uh, through this period of of this pandemic pandemic situation of of, of COVID nineteen, and this was a period there was a lot of uh, restrictions. In, in in a life so the this the, also this restrictions giving the the some positive and, and negative impacts to the to the different kind of people and uh, and this is the way if you are if you are doing doing this for the every client so you should you should follow him through the different situations and you you can work with him inside and outside and and for for every everything you are doing is is a different situation and different possibilities as as already was Elena mentioned so it's you, you you not always can do all the sports inside for example and and not the all trainings you can do outside so you are always mix the model which which also is is mentioned that's why it's multi-dimensional so and and also the client needs so this is this is the how to combine different activities and different uh, work models and different services we, we provided to the person so like a like a pet therapy like a uh, creative workshops and like like sports activities and and like uh, adventure therapy so going different excursions with the, with the clients in the is an open air and and also at the same time some some exact trainings which is going uh, to to teach some some specific things probably to prepare for some specific job for some specific work and and also the consultation so the consultations can be done in a groups consultations can be done individually the these consultations can be done also in in an office uh, one to one or or in a group but but in the same time you can also do and combine different activities in a in a fresh air outside like uh, consultations and some workings or some some sports activities even even through the sports activities we we managed to do some some psychological training and and some some testing of the clients so this is this is an interesting situation and uh, which also was was uh, was was done through this uh, different uh, different activities and through these different possibilities of the project we also engaged a lot of different staff and and a lot of different professionals and specialists in the project because of of every person's needs and uh, and and we was we was mostly on the, on the on the result orientated to finally to get the person into into labor market in the in the is a place which 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 person likes most and and to have a good contact with the employer and 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 in this this direction this is what the 
what 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 the what the project offered to the clients and uh, to make clients happy and and to make the close ones happy because also you should think during the project times that uh, we should give some some as a knowledge is as also free time to the to the close ones and also some educational moments to the to the society as as we done it through the different anti stigma campaigns and and different uh, courses educational courses done to the employers and to the society in general so it's 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 really a very multi purpose and a very multi dimensional program was was realized through this project and, uh, and this is about what what lot of lot of beneficiaries was 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 happy that realization of this was possible okay thank you thank you very much Norbert um, and I give the word well, finally to Salvadita Krista okay so we are very lucky that we uh, have a building where we could uh, run the youth house um, we mostly did the activities in the same spot at the youth house, not always, but that was a very strong base for our work. It had also practical and emotional reasons to it. One is that I already said that many of the youngsters had uh, some type of uh, disability. Um, the building where we are uh, based is a building which is accessible uh, for them. So like, um, and it's, it's not the case uh, with many places in, uh, in Budapest and in Hungary. So it, it was a very important aspect for us that it has to be a, a physically accessible uh, place. Also, uh, many youngsters had uh, problems with uh, navigating themselves, meaning that they would not uh, be able to travel on their own. They had to learn a route uh, and then they could uh, travel on their own. But... Uh, going simply to another address was uh, very difficult for them. Uh, so these are the practical reasons uh, uh, that I can name, but there were also more. And for the emotional reasons is that, um, as I said, like most of the youngsters had anxiety uh, and depression. And with anxiety, uh, we thought that it's very important that there is a safe place for them. A safe place, um, where we can control the situation, the surrounding uh, settings in a way, and also safe in the sense that uh, they already know the place, uh, they know like what is where, who is there, uh, if they cry then it's gonna be okay, if they laugh that's gonna be okay, etc, etc. So for these reasons we did most of the things uh, at the same location. We are also lucky because next to the building, we have a, a playing field and a green area with uh, table tennis, for example, and I don't know, basketball field, etc. So we could also go there outside to do the sport activities and, and so on. But there is one thing that I, I really would like to highlight, that the intention was not uh, to provide them with uh, endless therapy, but to get them to work. And if you wanted to get them to work, then it was also part of the development that they had to uh, become able to be at other places so that they can later on take a uh, job position. So we together would go for, uh, for example, for an excursion, uh, not only for walking in the forest, but also to practice like how to travel with uh, public transport or we would go together uh, volunteering to other locations to see like how is it to do work, like to be active uh, under the guidance of someone that they don't know. We also went to visit uh, factories, companies, so they can uh, together as a group go and see like how does a workplace look like, what the boss is saying, how the colleagues there are working and so on and so forth. And we also went uh, together to to work together for a payment. So they would be still not on their own, not alone, but joining a, a group. They also had to travel to another location than uh, the our youth house. 
uh, they would meet like uh, people that they didn't know before so they had to manage this uh, these uh, social interactions and they had to uh, be able to do the work uh, what we did in the specific situation so uh, for this reason i say like it would not be advised in my opinion to do everything at the same spot because if you want them to be able to um, to be able to run their life as they want to do it then they uh, gradually at least they have to become able to go to other places to be in other uh, communities to uh, work with uh, other colleagues to listen and follow instructions from people that they don't know and so on and so forth so for this um, uh, i I would uh, really highlight this uh, aspect uh, from uh, what and how we did. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lisa. Um, and according, according to what you have said, um, the only thing that I will comment is that um, I have the impression that um, either I choose a centralized uh, model or um, the other model where the territory will provide many, many things to people. Um, we always have to uh, have the um, capacity to, to, to switch, to be flexible. That means uh, maybe to, to switch from um, the individual to the group, uh, to switch between in and out, uh, to switch between the known and the unknown, and uh, from, from the stay uh, and the movement, uh, from uh, being lonely or being with others. So I think this is the main um, competence uh, and challenge also uh, in order to meet uh, differences, which are um, very, 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 very frequent, frequent and uh, very central to, the, uh, to this topic. Um, we can move to the first yeah. question. Because yeah, so, we are we're approaching the end of this conversation as um, as well as we're approaching the end of the uh, of the project as well. So um, okay, it's gonna end this year. So the, the, the last and final round um, and the last question is gonna be about the um, sustainability of some activities that you uh, implemented during, uh, during the LAC project. So we, we discussed a lot in these days with Norbert about um, sustainability. Veselina mentioned that, and so you have uh, now a clear um, ideas about um, what are the challenges that disadvantaged young people have to face every day in your local context. So a uh, question is about what challenges do you foresee in the next years um, that your um, organization has to face in supporting um, these young people? And how do you plan if you already have a plan of uh, sustaining some activities or implementing new ones and now um, basically how are you going to support uh, these young people in the in the next years so i don't know if Vizidina or jack or jackie is not thanks uh well starting with me now uh in addition to what my colleagues said uh, to the previous question regarding the minuses of uh, implementing uh, such a model I will have to say that the issue with financing uh, such an intervention is indeed the main uh, challenge we face. Uh, the maintenance of the physical space, uh, payment of uh, salaries to the team of uh, experts working with the clients, uh, ensuring the high quality of the service uh, provided is uh, rather costly. Uh, but the good news is uh, that this is uh, actually the only obstacle on our way to continuation of uh, the program. Uh, in our community, the Hidden Whites uh, Youth Health uh, has gained a lot, a lot of popularity uh, since uh, the opening of uh, the house uh, till now. Um, the, uh, the program and the experts implementing it uh, have managed to improve the lives of uh, plenty of needs, um, overcoming isolation and engaging in work in education. In order to continue to, uh, to, uh, to, to provide quality service to needs, 
uh, we aim to apply for funding and grants because uh, good practices should be preserved, uh, as we believe. Uh, we already achieved small success um, in this way. Uh, the model is uh, currently being transferred uh, into two other cities uh, in Bulgaria. Uh, recently, very recently, uh, two organizations uh, reached out to us with a proposal for joint work uh, and with a request to provide them with uh, our expertise in implementing the model. Uh, in other words, the program is uh, being franchised, which is a great proof of uh, how successful it is. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you very much. So Norbert, your turn. So I want to tell that we also had certain development on this on this model, and uh, we already uh, made the contacts with the, with the local national welfare ministry and with the municipalities. So we we also thinking on so sustainable continuity of project because the uh, improvement system should be built for persons and for families with uh, mental disordered persons. And uh, we should try to develop this system uh, as much as possible. At the moment, we have started the mentoring project, uh, which, is, which is financed by national budget. And uh, but this is this is not yet sufficient because we should think very much for the uh, uh, for the independent life for the supervision of client on a on a twenty four seven base, which means that uh, should be developed the model or or improved the same model, which was just kind of day centers in this. Uh, in these uh, open open, open uh, houses, and but uh, but we, we want to to improve the life to to make the separation and dependency of the of the of the person from the family. So to improve this uh, independent independent life model, uh, staying also in the job market, but uh, but to have the the staff or teams who will who will follow the person to be able to live separately and and privately and in dignity. So it's also interesting that Latvia just started to introduce the international program which called Housing First. So we think to also to mix with the, with the Housing First uh, uh, program to. Uh, offer to the client the separate living space, the private living space, then to arrange the team who will supervise from the social and from the medical points of view the client. It, it will also should give some security to the to the person and to the, uh, the his family members about the the items that uh, that nobody will will abuse somehow the, the client and he will be in security and and all can be it can be sure that that the person will feel himself good and secure and also it will be the good impact to the society from the members at the moment they are loaded with the with the client but then they will become more more free and will have will find the more private space private time so they will be able to go also to the labor market they will be able to support society with the, with the extra income so it it should be the good positive economical income also from the family members and because of this order made so society should also benefit with the, with the more clear system for such people and for such people um, 
family members and and so this this should be very much made on on a model on the win-win situation for every parties involved for the society who are always paying for the social 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 improvement for the client as as a, as a as a as a person to live in dignity and in safety and also for the for the family members and for the close ones to 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 live their private life and to to enjoy also and to join also the the possibilities to do and to 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 be in their professions and to to give the adding value to the society and to everyone at all. Thank you. Thanks, Norbert. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, I think uh, from Salovita Foundation, I can say that we learned a lot and we grew a lot from this project. Uh, but I agree very much with Veselina that this is um, um, an approach which uh, requires uh, a lot of resources, meaning uh, financial resources and also professional resources. And um, we are limited uh, with that. So on the moment, um, uh, I think Salvavita is focusing more on the short-term activities that we can uh, run with the same purpose uh, for the same uh, target group. But um, to continue as we were uh, doing it uh, through the project period is not really realistic um, as for the resources. Mm, concerning uh, the state of the youngsters uh, that I see in Hungary and also in Europe, I see that uh, there is uh, the tendency uh, that uh, the psychological issues uh, with youngsters uh, at this age of 20 something, uh, they have more and more psychological issues. Uh, mainly what I see is anxiety and depression, but there are also like other uh, um, uh, situations that they have to deal with. Um, I started youth work in 2004, and since then uh, I can say that uh, somehow the mental epilitism and the mental status of the youngsters are really changing. It can be related partly uh, to COVID, but I think we can speak uh, about a lot bigger uh, tendency. And what is behind that? It's a long discussion, so I'm not going there. So what I see is that there will be more and more needs for such kind of activities that we provided in the past years in our youth houses. Uh, so the need will grow. At least in Hungary, this is what I see. And uh, we have many requests uh, still uh, coming. The second learning point we took uh, from this uh, project is um, that the neurodiverse uh, youngsters, uh, after finishing schools uh, in Hungary, meaning after being uh, older than 18, 20 years old, they don't really have any institution where they can turn to. And at this uh, moment, they are not ready uh, to live their life on their own. They are not ready to take on a job or a work position. So there should be a school, a youth house, an institution, some programs supporting them to make this step. <clears throat> Sorry, this is really possible, but it requires uh, um, programs and it requires uh, funds as well. Also, I think it's very important that uh, this type of work that we did is possible only if different kind of professionals are willing to cooperate. In our case, it was youth work, uh, psychologist, psychiatrist, social work, special education, um, and many others, like job coaches, um, big company uh, leaders, and so on and so forth. Human resource management should be also there. So this job is really effective. It's really required, but it also does need uh, the, the cooperation of different kind of professionals. As long as only one type of professionals is going to deal with this type of youngsters who are vulnerable, who are neat, who are with disability, um, this uh, development is not uh, realistic to be reached uh, unless the cooperation of the uh, professionals. 
And the final uh, comment I would like to make is that as the time was going uh, through the, the project, um, I saw that more and more the step is needed that the youngsters can move into the self-directed way of participating of whatever we are offering. Obviously, it's not something they can do at the beginning, but there is a point uh, where we have to offer for them activities, space, I don't know, situations, when, uh, where they can decide like what they want to do, how they want to do it and go for it. Whether they will succeed or fail or something in between, I don't know. But this uh, ownership has to be there. Because it's a very tricky situation because, uh, that we want to provide them with safety. But after a while, providing safety is really holding them back. And uh, I think there has to be the professionals there to see the momentum when safety is not supporting their development anymore, but holding them back. And then uh, this type of little pilot projects, uh, little activities, I don't know, really coming from them and enabling them to make it their own and realize it, it has to be there. So when I say self-directed, this is what I mean, that they should be in charge after a while, of their learning, of their work, of their whatever they want to do uh, with their life, because uh, there is this important step if we want them to live the life that they want to live. Thank you. Thank you very much, Krista, and uh, thank you to all of you. I'm gonna summarize very briefly what you've said. And so we we all agree that it was, uh, um, a program that required a lot of financial resources, so it's hard to maintain the same activities once the uh, the project is over. But the popularity of the project, is, as Jackie uh, said, I mean, you spread the word around, and now you have some other cities that took the model and are try to implement it in uh, in other uh, areas, and um, also. Uh, one strategy could be continue just some short uh, short term um, activity uh, with maybe your own funding so some maybe small grants to just uh, continue some um, some parts some personal parts and uh, the strategy that Norbert um, talked about was like the kind of um, foot in the door strategy so uh, spread the word to public institution and um, uh, prove what's been done and give the uh, data and bring facts to the public institutions to uh, make this model more structural, not just uh, funded by projects. Then after two or three years, um, they finish and they just uh, finish uh, in the void and they leave no uh, impact uh, in, the, in the local context. Um, some other things you have said, um, that Krista said the really interesting thing about that uh, uh, next fundings could be a lot about mental health issues because now um, after the pandemic the, there's been an increase uh, on this kind of um, on this kind of issues and maybe there's a spotlight on this um, on these issues and they're gonna be uh, there's gonna be um, attention on that at the um, European level so maybe there will be more opportunity for new programs or new projects to implement and try new strategies and also cooperation from different professionals to create a system uh, for the, um, the support of the young people. And ultimately, I'd, um, I'd like to uh, finish this conversation and say that um, what you have done and like the, the, the main, um, everything that you have done was like a key to support them in make their own choices whether they are going back to training, to education, or choose the work, or choose uh, like um, some kind of help, some kind of therapy. So everything you have done and strategies you have implemented uh, led to uh, support the um, choices uh, of the of the people that you uh, you worked with. So I I hope this was interesting for the for the people that uh, followed us in um, in this live on Facebook, and I I thank you guys very much. And then see you, see you in the next week and months, and we're gonna uh, meet in Sofia in September. And I uh, wish you all the best, and uh, thanks, everyone. Thank you very much as well. Thank you, Tom. Bye bye. Bye, everyone. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.